Well, it had been another inspiring Easter Sunday service. It was a different time and a different place. And a rather esteemed English gentleman was making his way for the exit, hopeful that he could avoid contact with other congregants, and most especially with the parish pastor. Before he reached the door, there was a gentle arm on his shoulder, and then someone reached out and clasped hold of his hand. It was the parish pastor, and he had managed to cut him off and make his opportunity real to confront the man. He said, I need to see you in the Lord's army. The man knew he'd been caught. He did some rather quick thinking and responded to the pastor, well, actually I am part of the Lord's army, just a different branch. The pastor pondered for a moment and then responded, a different branch? What do you mean? He said, well, I'm part of the secret service branch. We all know that there is no secret service branch that's part of the community of Christ. We are all connected to the vine, and all of the different branches comprise the community of Jesus. You're either a part or you're not a part. You're all connected or you're not connected at all. And lots of people seem to think that they can have a vertical relationship with Jesus, but need not have one with the rest of the body of Christ. And it simply doesn't function that way. This past week, we took a look at what it means to be connected and how we can stay connected, even in a time when the coronavirus is impacting us. Jesus spoke in John chapter 15, and we mentioned this on Sunday morning. Didn't have time to get into it, but we do have a little more time now with baskets of leftovers. Listen to what Jesus says in John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He lops off every branch that doesn't produce, and he prunes those branches that bear fruit for even larger crops. He's already tended you by pruning you back for greater strength and usefulness by means of the commands that I gave you. Take care to live in me and let me live in you. For a branch can't produce fruit when severed from the vine, nor can you be fruitful apart from me. Yes, I'm the vine, Jesus says, and you're the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him shall produce a large crop of fruit. For apart from me, you can't do a thing. If anyone separates from me, he's thrown away like a useless branch, withers, and is gathered into a pile with all the others and burned. But if you stay in me and obey my commands, you may ask any request you like and it will be granted. My true disciples produce bountiful harvests. This brings great glory to my Father. When we think about being connected to the vine, when we think about being connected to the body of Christ, there are several truths that become apparent as we look at this passage. The first one is this. We have access to power that isn't self-generated. We have access to power that is not our own. I don't know if you've ever held a light bulb in your hand and tried by your imagination or the power of your mind or even by the power of a couple of potatoes that are strung together by a piece of wire to get that bulb to light. But the odds of success are very limited. You've probably experienced some success at different points with a tiny flicker, but the reality is when you gauge it, there's not a whole lot there and the power supply is not very great. And some would say, well, Pastor Blaine, I can generate my own power just by using uh, a generator. And that's possible. Uh, You could, but you're going to be very limited. You're going to be very restricted in terms of the ability that you have, the capacity that you have, and the output that is there. But when you're connected to the vine, using the metaphor that was apparent in Jesus' day, they didn't have electricity back then. When you're connected to the vine, 
you're capable of producing things far beyond anything that is within your own power, far beyond anything that you could imagine, because you're dialed into some pretty serious power and some pretty serious resources. Um, if you were to hold on to that light bulb uh, and try by the use of your imagination to get it to light, you're not going to have any success. But if you screw it into a light socket that is connected to some 8 or 10 or 12 gauge wire that leads to your electrical panel in your home, and then from there it leads out to the street where it connects with a, a much greater uh, capacity wire, which leads down the road and into a power grid, you are going to find that you're tapped into some very powerful resources. The same is true with regards to being connected to the power source that is Jesus and the branches that come off of there. The first aspect of understanding what it means to be connected to the body of Christ as we look at John 15 is this, that you're capable of power that comes into you and through you that isn't generated by yourself. It's generated by God working in and through his body and through the work of the Holy Spirit. The second thing is this, that I want you to see from this passage. You're a part of a much greater harvest when you're connected to the body of Christ. When we're working together, we accomplish a whole lot more than we would as one individual branch. We're able to accomplish a great deal more than anyone could imagine or think possible. I spoke to you some time ago about the fact that when we were at our first church in Eau Claire, there was a man who, as a hobby, used to uh, look after some Clydesdale horses. And Jake... Uh, talked to me the one day and asked me if I understood uh, how great the power and the strength of these horses were. And I uh, had to ask him a few questions. He said, do you know how much one of these horses can pull? I had to confess that I didn't. He said, one of these horses can pull 4,000 pounds, which is a lot of power. That's a lot of pull. And then he said, but do you know what happens when we put two horses together in a team? And he had about four or six horses there. He said, do you know what happens when two of them are placed together? How much do you think they're capable of pulling? Well, I had already had the new math back in my day, at the dawning of the ages. Uh, we called it arithmetic back then, and basically plus and minus or some of the fancier folks would have called it addition and subtraction. And so I said, well, if one can produce the capacity to pull 4,000, I suppose two would be able to pull 8,000 pounds. No, he said, that's not the case. And I looked at him rather strangely. He said, if we put the two of them together, they're actually capable of pulling eight, not 8,000 pounds, but 12,000 pounds. When you put two horses together that are workhorses, uh, that are working together as a team, they're capable of doing far beyond what they would be able to do individually. And there's a spiritual application to that. I don't pretend to understand the math, but I do understand the principle. When you're connected to the other branches that are also connected to Jesus, uh, you'll find that you have even greater pull, greater influence you'll find that you're able to be involved in a harvest that is much greater than you might think you're capable of. Because it's not just about you. You're working in conjunction with, in cooperation with, those who are part of the body of Christ. The third thing and final thing is this. Well, let me recap. First of all, you're connected to power and resources beyond yourself. You are capable of being involved in a much greater harvest than you would otherwise be involved in. And the third thing, you're concerned with a life of abundance rather than a life of complacency. As I was reading this past week in preparation for the message on Sunday, 
I came across an article in the Huffington Post. It was from 2016, and it talked about early retirement being the kiss of death, and uh, that being the result that a study had found. This is what it says, study after study, this is taken directly from the article, has shown that people who retire early tend to die sooner, including the latest study from Oregon State University, and then I skip down a little bit, even people who describe themselves as unhealthy were found likely to live longer if they kept working. That's what the study found. In another article in the Market Watch in 2018, another article that I read this past week, and it was the same topic, it was actually addressed uh, to the same uh, focus, and this one dealt primarily with those who were 62, uh, 62 years of age and retiring early. This is what it said. Why would taking early retirement lead to increased mortality? The evidence points to unhealthy changes in lifestyle that often accompany retirement. For example, the professors behind the study point to other research that found male retirees often become sedentary. They sit around a lot. And they often end up watching more television. Well, if you're 62 years of age, maybe you ought to turn the screen off right now and start doing jumping jacks. Perhaps it might, perhaps it might prolong your life. Not really. But you can identify with what I think the professors are trying to say, that we tend to grow a little bit lax, a little bit lazy, sedentary, and complacent. And it isn't just our physical bodies that suffer. It's our the emotional well-being that suffers. There is a tremendous emotional toll that takes place in our lives because we have very little purpose in life. We don't have a reason to produce anymore. And in some ways, there's very little reason to exist. And so, as is often the case, one, well, case once a branch loses its usefulness, it has a tendency to wither and to die. And that's precisely what we read here in this scripture passage in John 15. But when you stay connected to the vine, and when you stay connected to the other branches, there is a sense of purpose. You're fulfilling your design. You're fulfilling that which God has intended for you. You're cooperating with other branches in order that you might be able to bear fruit that will glorify your Father in heaven. You're part of a much bigger harvest than you could possibly accomplish in and of yourself, and that's exciting. And you're living large. You're living life abundantly because you're connected to Jesus and to the, those branches who are also connected with Jesus. That's what it means to be connected. That's why it's important for us to remain connected in the body of Christ, even as we go through this crisis, this present crisis, not in spite of the present crisis, but in light of the current crisis, we need to remain connected to one another. This past Sunday, we gave you some ways to do that, and so I'm going to encourage you to make use of them to take the remainder of this week and really begin to focus in practical ways that you can offer words of encouragement to other members of the body of Hollowell. Might be a telephone call or an email. Might be a letter dropped in the mail. Might be a text. Make and take the opportunity. Acts of service, we provided you with opportunities to think about and to see how Acts of service might be able to really encourage and keep you connected with other people. Gift giving. And then, of course, quality time. So I'm encouraging you today, afresh and anew, to take advantage of every opportunity to stay connected to the vine and stay connected through the vine to the other branches of this body. Because we all know that there is no secret service branch in the body of Christ. The Lord bless you.